Well, we just showed up at the Antique Motorcycle Club of America's largest swap meet of the year. It's held in Davenport, Iowa by the Black Hawk chapter. We just showed up, we're just parking our bike. We're gonna go check this thing out, let's go. Uh, this is really a, my interpretation of how I thought this might feel. It's, it's really the quintessential positioning of the human figure on Speedway bikes. And I took it from two, uh, two different uh, photos and, and put those together in my own interpretation. The neat thing about Speedway racing is, is they, the total loss of traction in the corners. And um, they would drift in the same way a little boat would in the water. And they would use their foot as a rudder. And what was neat about it is, is, is they would come into the corner they would drag their foot, and just like a rudder will pull a boat to the left or right just because it'll put more pull on one side of the vessel, that's what his foot did on, on, the, on the inside of the bike, and he'd drag that. As he came into the arc of the corner, he'd shift the foot to the center point, and then he'd end up using that, sh that foot into the front to keep his balance as he came out of the corner, into the straight again. And so the, the leg would arc back and forth in, in, the, in the arc of the turn. And uh, so this is a guy dropping into the turn, the guy coming out of the turn, and so it's more of an exaggerated, pulled together, full dynamic of, of uh, this anatomical motion of the guy. Speedway racing was really interesting to me because it was so scary, so hairy. Um, these guys would, would push this all out, and, and, and both wheels would, would be without traction, but it was a, in a controlled slip. And um, I really liked them because they were small bikes, they were purpose-built, and um, the, 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 the thrill that, that went through the audience and the rider at the time, they were high rev machines and, and a, lot of, a lot of motion, you know. This is a 1934 CAC Harley Davidson. It was a purpose-built um, Speedway motorcycle. I think it was about six of these in existence. And they were never sold to the public. They were only made for the factory race team. And then on the West Coast, Crocker made um, a few dozen of these, and he didn't sell them to anybody who'd buy them. And they were both in competition with the JAPs and the, um, uh, the Rudge bikes. Uh, speedway racing took off and was all the rage in New Zealand and in Great Britain. And they, they, the, the Brits picked it up from the island, from, from New Zealand and from uh, Australia. But this was a sport that was actually started in California. And it just built up bigger across the pond. And then it came back and when it had a second resurgence, that's when, uh, when Crocker and uh, Harley Davidson started jumping on the bandwagon. But earlier on, it was already taking place as grass track racing before it was Speedway. I usually start with an idea. There's a bike that I particularly love or a, a picture that's caught, caught a certain uh, emotion or drama that, that, that piques my interest. I like to have the actual motorcycle to study it. Then the mechanical beauty of the bike is really neat. And then, then it really has to have a dynamic that's, that's pulls my attention to it. That's why I'll always go to hill climbing because they're, they're in a really dynamic climb in that vertical plane and you always find bikes in a horizontal plane. And so a motorcycle with a guy on it can be fairly boring as he goes straight down the road, but when he's really trying to eke out all he can out of the bike, you get way more anatomical stretching and, and binding going on and it makes for a lot of interest. Uh, I start in, in jewelry wax for the motorcycle. I'll cast in its entirety and then uh, from the, when the motorcycle's cast, then I'll take uh, a clay and I'll start the anatomical studies of the, the human anatomy and then the base. And um, so the, each, each one really represents a few dozen separate, separate castings, hollows and solids, all welded back together. And then in an old world style patination process with heat and chemicals, I'll, I'll apply the different shades and, and hues. It's funny, I, I think that, that you know, there, was, there was a great boxing coach once that said that he wouldn't coach anybody that didn't feel fear. And there were a lot of people that, that don't feel that. And that's really a, um, not an advantage. And you talk about people that are fearless. Well, if somebody's fearless, then it means they lack common sense. It means they lack, quite frankly, they, they, they don't have the intuition that, that, that the potential danger, therefore they're not smart. They're belligerent, they might be 
um, effective in what they're doing for a short time, but eventually they'll hurt themselves or somebody else. Somebody that understands that they need to manage their fear, work with it, and overcome it, that, that's a whole different animal. So if these guys were feeling fear, I know if I was on this bike, I would feel fear, absolutely. If, are these guys? I don't know. They're, they, they, they've pulled themselves. They're in the, at the, at the, in the type of racing they're in. They're in the most precarious positions. I'm sure their hearts are racing. I'm sure, I'm sure their adrenaline is at its height and they're pushing the machine in the same way. Its RPMs are racked to, to, to the limit, and a lot of times they push the bikes too far, they ruin the motorcycles, or they push themselves too far and went into the sides, and, 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 and so they could ruin their body as, as, as easy as they could ruin this machine. Uh, you, you can go, this, this piece is my latest piece, it's called Speed Merchants. Uh, it's Speedway Racing, it's a Harley Davidson and a Crocker, and if you go to my website at uh, jeffdeckerstudio.com you can get more information on pricing and the other pieces that I have available and I've got a pretty neat site that a guy put together for me so I'd encourage anybody to go there and see my collection and my artwork.